What's up guys? How are we doing? Hey, I got some beautiful news today. Um, EBC, we've known this for a little while. They're back on board. We've got EBC brakes and they don't just do brakes. They do rotors, clutches, uh, anything you need to stop your bike or clutch operated. Their, uh, their USA headquarters is here in Las Vegas where I'm located. Steve, James, all the guys over there, they're so cool. I swing by just to hang out once in a while. And now they're officially a part of the show, guys. So welcome, EBC Brakes. Check out their uh, website, EBC. Uh, EBC Brakes, I'll put a link in the, in the description here. But check out EBC Brakes, let them know, hey, support Cooksey. Um, maybe one day they'll just hire me to run their whole uh, social media and everything, we'll see. Uh, but I love these guys, I'm glad they're back on board. And yeah, it's nice to have good partners that I, that I really trust. I love their brakes, I love their clutches, I use their products. I even have a stool right here. Oh, as it knocks over my EBC brakes, thank you guys. Um, they are kick ass. I love EBC and now they're on board. Guys, I want to start this off with something pretty serious. Concussions, you guys all, if, you, if you've watched me for a while, you know, I'm a big believer in rider safety and it drives me bananas when we see stuff like Cameron McAdoo knocking himself silly at the Atlanta Supercross yet being allowed to ride. Uh, Austin Forkner dinging himself or Adam Cincerello dinging himself in practice, wobbling back to their bike and then they're saying, oh, you can pass concussion protocol. If you watch the NFL and you saw Tua Tuivosa, I think that's how you say his name, for the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, hit his head on last Sunday wobble back to the huddle, they pulled him out. Keep in mind, NFL concussion protocol is way, way, way stiffer than motocross, if there even is one in motocross. It's debatable whether it even is. Well, Ty, or Tua, I guess told them it was a back injury. Players wanna play. And the last thing you can do is ask someone who's been hit in the head, who's extremely competitive, worried about losing their job, if they're okay, yeah. 99 times out of 100, these warriors, football, motocross, they're gonna tell you they're okay. That's why we need people to watch out for them. You have to protect them from themselves. In this sport, and in football, and all these other sports, the last thing, and it, this, this is the one thing that drives me insane about our concussion protocol, is when the guys say, oh, well, he said he was okay, he answered all the questions. The problem is, concussions are an inexact science. They do not know what happens with the neurons and how it scrambles the brain. They don't know the long-term ramifications. They don't know every concussion is different. You can hit your head, wobble back, and be fine forever. You can hit your head, wobble back, take another blow, and die. They, like Those are the two extremes. But it's that second blow that causes the severe damage. The first blow hits you, scrambles you. The neurons need to, uh, according to one doctor that I was listening to, and I'm not a doctor, I'm just somebody who's hit their head a few times. Uh, those neurons need to actually resettle and get where they're supposed to be. And if you shake them again when they're already wobbled, that's when it causes serious permanent damage and causes serious problems. So anyway, guys, check that out. Watch what happened to Tua and just take that as a cautionary tale. Concussions are no joke. You want to ride through an ACL, go for it. You want to ride through a torn hamstring, you want to ride through a broken wrist, go for it. Don't mess with the brain. You mess with the brain, you lose everything else. If the brain doesn't work, the whole body, you don't need your whole body if the brain doesn't work. Uh, if you can't remember where you live, it's not important that you finish that race 10 years ago if you're driving around. And it's no joke, there's, no, there, there's a reason why football players and, and all these athletes who take blows to the head, their lives are shorter. Look at the pro wrestlers, the, how many concussions they take. CTE is a real thing. Beyond CTE, there's lots of other things. The brain is so complex. And why you say, oh, well, I listen to doctors. I hate to break it to you guys, but doctors don't know jack shit about how it works. They really don't. They're just scratching the surface on how the brain works, what it can do, and you know how to determine when it's injured, when it's not injured. These are, these are big things. And, all I can say is we're not gonna stop riding, we're not gonna stop playing football, but when we see somebody wobble back to a huddle, wobble back to a bike, don't take their word for it, sit them down. 
They need people who care about them and their loved ones to sit them down. They might not like it. Take their helmet away. Whatever you have to do to keep them from riding that day. Let them get a reasonable amount of time. That's debatable. I say four weeks usually, but two to three weeks until you can get your heart rate up with symptom-free multiple days in a row. That's what I would go with, but I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. Um, but I just know we're way too liberal with this and taking somebody who's just had their head hits word for it is not the right answer. All right, guys, if you want to have a, a training program that is educated, that measures vital statistics like your heart rate, your resting heart rate, your sleep, and works around your family, your job, hit up Coach Rob at CompleteRacingSolutions.com. Uh, he's got programs for everybody. Um, you guys buy exhausts for your bike, you buy tires, you buy race gas. It is an expensive sport. Don't skimp on your workout program. You'll get more out of your, uh, your efforts, you'll be more durable, and you'll actually be safer. So hit up Coach Rob, pop for the good program. You can do a program for 20 bucks a month. Pop for the good program and, and get yourself dialed in. Try it after six months. Coach is the type of guy where if you do his program the way he says to do it, Six months later, if you're not happy with your results, honestly, they'll probably send you packing and, and give your money back. I don't, I can't guarantee that, but that's the type of guy coach is. Um, give it a try, guys. It, it's amazing. It'll change your life. Um, Steel City Men's Clinic. If you need some supplements, if you need, if you're having some health issues, if you've had a traumatic brain injury, um, they work with that. They work with balancing your hormones. So that's one of the things people don't tell you about head injuries. Is when you hit up a head injury lowers your testosterone, lowers your body's ability to produce testosterone. Maybe you need a jump start, maybe you need some HCG, maybe you need something. Um, anyway, they'll run your blood work, they'll work with you and they will get you dialed in. Oh, and they have some secret tricks for arm pump. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna give them away here, you're gonna have to call them, but if you have arm pump issues, call Steel City Men's Clinic. It's out of the box, their technique, but it seems to be working, um, but yeah. And now I am going to jump into this. Let's get into this whole thing right now. And uh, I'm going to apologize in advance to Roger DeCoster because I'm about to trash him. I'm in the empire business. Everybody love everybody! You all know exactly who I am. All right, guys. So Roger DeCoster is the motocross equivalent of Joe Biden. What I mean by that is not that he's a political douchebag or anything like that. What I mean is he's so old and he's the face of an organization, and he's a face of a movement, and he's a face of, you can put him out there, and nobody questions Roger DeCoster. Um, but I don't think he's got, he's not what he once was. And trotting him out there after the designations to stand with you know, the whole team while the whole team's smiling, and Roger's got this frowny, sour puss on it, look on his face, it's not good, guys, it's not good. So let's stop trotting him out there he is the winningest man around motocross. However aspect you want to be, everywhere he's gone, they've won. You can't argue that. He is the man. So I'm not trying to, like I said, I apologize in advance for trashing a true legend of the sport, somebody who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, but I also think the sport has passed him by. He has done more than pretty much anybody I've ever seen in this sport or probably will ever do, but it's time to step back. Let him be a part of the Designations team as a consultant. Let's not trot him out there. Let's not have him making crucial decisions. Let's put Paul Parabenos. Let's put some of these guys that are more with the current riders, that understand and are communicating and making the decisions. We won. And I'll be honest with you, I know it's because a lot of those guys did take those roles from him. But let's take it a step further. Let's honor him. Let's maybe call it the Roger DeCoster selection to the team. We can honor him and also send him packing at the same time. And like I said, let's name something after him because he's the one that got the USA originally into this race. He's been responsible for so many victories. But those days are over. Let's pay tribute and set him aside. Let's stop trotting him out there like they do with, and I say this with no political aspirations, trotting him out there and having him say stuff He's not nearly as dumb as Joe Biden, because Joe doesn't know what he's saying, unless he's got a teleprompter and it reads everything exactly. Roger's more with it, 10 times more with it than that, but it's the same thing. Let's stop trotting an older person who it's kind of passed him by for us to, to, 
to say stuff about. So anyway, that's my, that's my decoster thing. And I would say, I would give the same advice to KTM. Stop letting him make crucial decisions. Let Ian Harrison and some of these younger guys that are a little more connected to it, let them make the decisions, pay tribute to Roger, but also take the keys away from the old guy. Uh, it's time for grandpa to hand over the keys and start riding shotgun. How about that? Um, and, okay, World Supercross. So Adam Bailey, who's one of the key guys in putting this whole thing together, was on Gypsy Tales. And he came out, and there, he's just blown away at how much Feld and MX Sports have come at them, guns blazing, trying to shut down their series and literally tie up all the riders, turn the manufacturers against them. It's very real. That has all happened. And I will say, Adam Bailey and the World Supercross Group did make some mistakes. Coming out and pointing the gun at Outdoor Nationals, it actually united Feld and MX Sports, which... By the way, I'm hearing there's some issues behind the scenes with Feld and MX Sports as to where this $10 million is going to come up in the series. Uh, that's all. They kind of just made that announcement out of nowhere. It's awesome. They better follow through on that after saying that. But the fact that both series have gone to the manufacturers and turned them against the series is bullshit. I've covered this a little bit with Roxon. I like how Roxon stood against it and said, I, I signed with these guys to do this race. I'm going to do this race. That's awesome. Um, but he also gave up a lot. And like I said, I, if you want to watch the video I did, I was really hard on Honda, but I also see Honda's point of view. Um, I still side with Ken, but I'm not as, as crucial on that. Um, what the World Supercross is doing right now, they needed to focus more on this in the beginning. They want to take these national Supercross series and make them a part of the World Supercross series. And the way they're going to do this is the night before, so okay, let's say you're going to Australia. What they're going to try and do is run the Australian National Supercross Championship on the same track, same stadium on Friday, and then on Saturday do the World Supercross and maybe have one or two wildcard guys from the National Series race in the World Series. That way it builds and draws attention to the National Series and also boosts the, the World Series as the big one. I think it's great for these these smaller countries that have Supercross series that are trying to get local attention, it builds both. And that way it doesn't look like you're attacking them. And they wanted to do something like that with Feld, but MX and Outdoor, at the Outdoor Nationals, they, I, I, I personally believe a lot of the back channeling was with the Coombs family, of course, um, and, and the manufacturers and saying they're going to kill this and it's going to kill that. And they got Feld, um, Worried. Anyway, they should have, World Supercross should have came out a little bit more uh, reserved. They're like a bull in a china shop, and now they're trying to walk that back, and you just can't do that. I hope they can recover from the attacks from the, the National Series here in the United States. I Because they do have some really good ideas, and like I said, competition is good to a certain point. You don't want to cut the demographic, but... If you can build in areas where the other series is not, which was their original game plan, and that's what they said they're going to do, uh, although they did take aim at the Outdoor Nationals, um, that was something they weren't too worried about. Uh, that's, that's the mistake. Um, but I, I like that this series, they're going to have Jason Baker building the tracks. Uh, they're doing a different format. They've got the teams. It's a built on a platform where you can actually have a team and make money. They should have been a little bit more concerned about what the manufacturer's needs were, but it is what it is. You can't walk that back now. And one of the things they said on the podcast with uh, Adam said, and uh, Jace brought it up, and I, I, I was like, are you serious? I've been talking about this for years. Nobby Height. They were talking about these tracks getting torn up. Casey Stoner, World MX, or MotoGP champion and racing genius, Casey Stoner, I don't know if he saw one of my articles, because I wrote an article about this on Vital MX a long time ago. I've been on this bandwagon forever about knob height. Let's change the knob height, and it will stop ripping up these tracks. I've spoke with Dunlop. Dunlop could have a tire designed and in production within a year or two, and it would be a spec tire. You could have a spec height. Um, the different brands could make them. They will not lose much traction. They just won't be chucking gigantic roosts and digging trenches every time a 450 goes through. So... I'm glad Casey Stoner is, you know, on the bandwagon with that. 
And also guys, if you wanna make your garage look like a factory garage, hit up epicgaragedesigns.com. They've got everything, flooring, slat wall, um, cabinets, you name it, they'll make your garage look completely factory. And don't forget this weekend, guys, Verb Moto Women's Championship. They're going for the big bucks. Uh, biggest pro purse for women will be October 1st at the Verb Classic. So anyway, guys, uh, have a good day. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Did I go too hard on DeCoste or, um, you know, do you agree with me on the World Supercross? Did they come in a little hot? Are they going to survive? What are we going to do there? And then also, uh, what about concussions? Do you guys really think concussions are a problem? Um, or, am I, or am I overreacting? So anyway, guys, remember, subscribe, and I will chat with you later.